Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is Elizabeth Finlayson of The Nonprofit Coach, and I am so happy that we have Sequina Luckett with us today for Does Your Nonprofit Website Work? And I would love to find out the answer of that as a small business owner. I want to know if my website works. And I think maybe it doesn't. So, okay, with that, let's jump in. Okay, I, as I said, I am Elizabeth and Lathan. I am the CEO and lead coach of the nonprofit coach. My mission is to create a fairer and more equitable, inclusive world filled with empathy and beauty. And my team and I do this by supporting our nonprofit clients with strategic planning, fundraising training, and also fundraising support <coughs> services. So with that, bless you. Uh, let's move forward. <laughs> All right, Sequita, tell us about yourself. Hello, my name is Sequita Lockett. It's like C Queen now. That's how you pretty much pronounce it. I always tell people it's like Sabrina with a Q, so it's easier to pronounce for people. Um, I am a business design strategist. I have been doing this for, I want to say 13, no, it's been 14 years now. I am also in the marketing sector too. So I kind of got the best of kind of like all worlds. Um, when I started out, I started doing uh, websites kind of on my own where I had a web designer to create a website for me. I hired him, I paid him, I was excited about it. And he botched it. It was the worst website I ever had in my life. But the best thing he could do for me is put it on WordPress. So I was super excited about that because I had to teach myself how to do it. I created my own website and kind of like the rest is history. Everybody's like always asking me for, um, for different, you know, ideas and how to create websites and things like that. Um, most of my clients are larger scale clients, Ulta Beauty, uh, 1-800-Flowers, one, one um, 1-800-Baskets. I have uh, worked in the marketing sector, creating um, advertisements and marketing and things like that. So I'm here to help as best I can as far as when it comes to websites and how I can kind of help you generate more income and um, things like that in your business. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to ask is what is the first step to fixing my website? The first step, if you go to the next slide for me. Sure. So um, I don't know if you have the right one up. You know, I think that might be true. Why don't I unshare and why don't you talk and I will find out what we need to do. Okay, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> So the first thing that you need to do in starting with your website is do a walkthrough. So walking through your website is um, what you would normally do as walking through as a customer. I say go through it step by step and section by section. Um, we'll definitely get to do a walkthrough on here today as we kind of move forward, but I definitely want you guys to know that you want to have the same experience that your customer or your client is having as they are coming to your website and seeing the things that uh, they would want to see when it comes to what they're doing, how they're experiencing it for the first time. So another thing uh, that Elizabeth asked me was, what are three things do you need to do to have on your website? And um, some things that you definitely want to do is you want to definitely build a no like and trust factor with your clients. That's like a must. The first thing is always saying, well, how do people get connected to me? How do people know what I'm doing? How can they like me? And how can they trust me? And your website is kind of like your virtual business card. It's the one thing that people will always try to look for if they don't find you on social media. They're definitely going to try to find your website. So even if you don't have a full head on website, my suggestion is to have like a, a website where people can start building and getting to know who you are, what you do. I'm seeing it from a personal basis, but you can also do it on a business side because even on the nonprofit, people want to know, well, what's your journey? What do they, what is, how do they get to know you? How do they get to like you? How do they get to trust who you are? Because you're asking for donations. So if people are asking for donations. They want to know who, who you are. <laughs> so 
they have to know these things about you in order for you to kind of grow and expand and really get to know what it is and get to the nitty gritty of who you are. You can go on to the next slide. <laughs> okay. So I want to talk, are you guys seeing the build, no like, trust factor slide with a greenhouse? All right, good. Something worked. <laughs> so three must-haves that you want to do. You want to tell people what you do, who you do it for, and what are the results that you get them. So in your case, as a nonprofit, what do you do? Who do you do it for? So who are you looking for? Who's your target audience? Who's your client? and what type of results that you would get for them. So in your case, if you're say, you have a nonprofit that um, helps, you know, shelter homes for dogs, your results are, well, um, someone has a dog that they cannot afford to keep anymore. Now you need to find a home for them. How many homes do you have that you can actually have people who want to adopt a dog? It's a number of ways that you can think about it as a nonprofit step. Think about, don't think, oh, I'm just nonprofit. Think, oh, I'm a business too. So looking at yourself as both a business and a nonprofit, then you have to understand you still have results that you want to definitely give people on your website so that they kind of know, um, well, if I'm going to donate funds to you and I'm asking for donations, I'm going to actually, they're actually going to look for people and have people adopt dogs or whatever nonprofit you're in. That makes sense. And if I could just say too, I think from the nonprofit um, perspective, you know, we always talk about impact. And so I think what Sequina is talking about is like, what are your results? It's like, what is your impact? And I would say for nonprofit, even more than businesses, they don't care about us, they care about like what they are helping to do in the world. And so we want to be able to tell that story. Um, and I think one of the things that's tricky about a nonprofit is we often, we have two audiences, right? We have the people who are there to try to get our services often, as well as we have the people who might be funding or supporting those services. So there's kind of an extra layer to think through on this. Um, but these are still three really simple questions we want to be answering um, for our websites. Yeah, All right, can I just say one thing here? So when Sequina and I were preparing for this, I said, you know, it'd be great for you to share things like that are working. It also might be great to share things that are not working. And so I volunteered my website for um, her to look through. So I have no idea what she's going to say here. So I just want you to know I'm being brave and I'm letting Sequina just say whatever she needs to say to me. So um, I'm just, that's all. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Being so brave. Um, I, I really don't have much to say and, you know, like really bad things to say about your website. The whole point of us doing a walkthrough is so that you can really get an understanding of what people are really looking for um, and how you can actually connect with your audience in a way where you're not even trying. It's just, it's just going to happen. So I'm going to share my screen if that's okay with you so that I can show you um, I'm going to show my website and I'm also going to walk through Elizabeth's website. All right, you should be good to go. So I will stop share. Can everybody see my screen? Okay, good. Yes. I'm going to be looking this way because I have two monitors. Um, so if I'm looking this way, I promise you my camera's this way, but I'm talking to you. Um, so no worries. So the nonprofit coach, I actually really, really like your website, Elizabeth. Okay. So I just want you to know that There's just certain things that you might want to make some small tweaks and changes to, which for me, is like giving somebody a call to action or figuring out how you can help service them in some way. And I'm just going to bounce back between both my website and yours. So you kind of get an understanding of what I'm saying. Um, so for instance, you're telling people here in this area, you need to tell people what you do and how, and who you do it for. So that's like the first thing that you definitely want to say. So if we go to my website, can you all see mine? I am telling people, this is who I'm looking for. This is what I do for them. And 
on here's a call to action so that they can either see my services or book something with me. So you want to give them something like that. Also, when I go back to Elizabeth, there isn't really anything that you're offering. So you want to offer something of kind of substance, a PDF or something to let people know, hey, you know what you're doing. So with that, you definitely want to offer something like, I offered up a quiz. That's a way for you to get people on your email list. It's kind of like an onboarding type of deal where people can come on, take this quiz. I'm asking for your email address and I'm also offering you something in return for the end. So you kind of do, if I do a start the quiz, it kind of gives me a pop up. And it lets me know what, you know, I'm going through these quiz step by step by step. And they're actually getting information to figure out, well, if I took the quiz, what type of website grade would I get? Just by answering questions. So in your case, you might want to offer something like that. It can be something simple. It doesn't have to be over the top. You don't have to do a lot. A simple PDF to say, hey, here are 10 steps, you know, to help make your nonprofit profitable. Or, um, and you can also in that PDF, once you ask for their email address, you can actually send an email out to them saying, hey, thanks for signing up. Here's the PDF that you requested. So something as simple as that. And that actually helps you because again, it's helping you build that no like and trust factor. Again, because now, they know who you are, they know what you can do, and they also know how you can, how they can trust you because now you're starting to build a small rapport with them. You haven't even spoken to them, but they're starting to feel like, oh man, she's really paying attention and in my head because I really want to make this nonprofit make something more than what, what I'm doing now. Or if I'm in a business, I really want to make this business profitable but she's really helping me do X, Y, and Z. So that's what you're trying to figure out. Um, then it kind of stops here. So then there's nothing else that you're offering. You're saying, hey, get in touch with me. This is great. I like the fact that you're saying get in touch with me, but get in touch with me for what? So you want to kind of tell people, well, what's your, what you're offering them so that they kind of get a true understanding. And I'm going to go back to mine because these are the things that I can offer. Roadmap to revenue, brand, you know, creative services that we also offer because we also do uh, web design, graphic design. We are marketing planners. We are brand strategists. We are, I mean, I have a whole powerhouse of people that I can work with. Um, so I also give them a call to action. Hey, let's book a call with me. It's a free call. That's something that says, oh, well, let me click on it and see what, what she's talking about. And it's a 30 minute chat with me so that we kind of get an understanding to see if it's something that we can work together and do it. Um, another thing, I call this my street creds, this area right here. Um, these are street creds to let people know, I call them street creds because it's easier. <laughs> but this is letting people know who your clients are. So you definitely want a section like that. If you've worked with various clients, you know, it could be large or small, it doesn't matter. It's just whatever benefits you. You definitely want to tell people what clients you've ever you've worked with or um, in your case, if you're a nonprofit and people donate millions of dollars to your nonprofit, then you can easily say, hey, we have, you know, some prestigious groups of people that donate to us every year. And that lets us know in our minds, oh, well, I mean, if she's worked with Grubhub before, I might work with her because these are larger companies that people know who they are and they know them. They know these brands, they trust them. Um, and also another thing, especially for your nonprofits, you definitely want to do some sort of case study. So um, in your case, Elizabeth, you help a lot of different nonprofits. You definitely want to have something like a case study of how you've helped one company go from, um, making a hundred thousand dollars a year in their nonprofit or having these donations to like millions of dollars. You definitely want to say something like that to people so that they kind of get an understanding of who you are. Again, everything that I'm saying is building this no like and trust factor of you. 
because they want to know who you are. Another thing is what your clients are saying. So you want to talk, you want to ask. Every time you work with the client, ask them for a testimonial, whether it's video or it's just a, a type that they just sent you an email or they posted it on social. You want something saying, hey, this is what they are saying and the work done for them. Um, and you also want to have like feature section, like you've been, you've talked to a webinar. I can literally take your webinar and say, hey, I've been featured in this area. Or if you haven't been specifically featured and you have clients that have, you could definitely say, hey, my clients have been featured in these, you know, these spots. ABC, NBC, any of these places, people want to know that because that's information to them. They're like, oh, she was on NBC. <laughs> she was in Essence Magazine. They want to know these things. Believe it or not, because you're building that, that helps them understand, oh, well, they are somebody. They may be small, and it doesn't matter if you're small or if you're like this. They just want to know who you are and how you can help. I'm going to stop sharing, but we're going to go back to the next. Do you have a question for me, Elizabeth? I was just going to say, like, how it translates some of this for nonprofits is you can think, like, what the clients are saying can be those, like, you know, we often call them client testimonials of the people who receive our services. Um, and, you know, those impacts, like, there's so much emphasis right now on measurement, um, effectiveness. Um, but they can be things donor spotlight. So I think how I'd like translate that is those are some of those things too. And I think when we talk about like those offer, I think for business, it's so much easier to see like, oh, of course, you know, she's got this class you can offer or a, or a, you know, a PDF or whatever. But I think we sometimes lose sight of is we have so much expertise within our nonprofits. There are things that we are doing, um, whether we're helping people to get um, into a home or go through a, an application process for student loans or whether we're connecting to something. And we can be offering that to people and letting them know some of our expertise and what we do. So um, don't have to be like constrained to thinking like, oh, well, that's a business thing. It's like, no, how do we as a nonprofit offer something? You know, arts offer all kinds of things, right? There's shows, there's all kinds of stuff. So just putting that out there. Yeah, there's packages, there's things that you could actually say to people. And like I said, it could be super simple. It could be a, a simple podcast that you were on and you just want to get that out because you thought it was so inspirational. It's a number of ways that you can take what you do and just start putting it out there to people so that they can get an understanding of who you are and how you can help them. All right, I'm going to bring our screen back up. All right. Can we see here? Yes, I see it. Oh. All right. Sequina, yeah. so I have a small budget. Can I fix it myself? <laughs> yes. Go to the next slide for me. <laughs> okay. Woohoo. So my short answer is it depends. So it depends on what is actually wrong with your website. So if you have gone through it step by step, all of these things that I've walked through in the last um, segment, you could definitely do you can kind of start looking at your website as a whole and start making these small tweaks and changes. I'm not saying go do a whole overhaul. The design of the website is not the point. The point is the information that the people are getting. So when you're starting, if you can make these small changes, these copy changes, you could hire a simple copywriter that could do like simple copy changes for you on your website without completely overhauling it yeah, you could definitely do that on the budget. If it's something that's not functional, you know, it's like um, now we need people to have like a donation button and it's just not working right. And I need them to actually go to this page and then I want them to get some sort of thank you and like create a whole process of things. That might be a little bit more costly to you. 
So it just depends on what you're exactly trying to do. So it's like, what's my end goal? I always ask that question to my clients. We start with the end first in a website because if I know what my purpose is of this website, is it informational? Am I trying to sell them something? Then it lets me know how to actually project and start taking action in what we're doing. So it's a step-by-step -step process. Once you figure that end goal out and you go through your website and do that walkthrough for yourself, then you can easily say, well, people aren't really getting it. <laughs> and this is why, you know, and now you can actually see clearly why things aren't working. So if you feel like you need a full overhaul, there are so many designers that are out here, web designers, that um, their price ranges are different. Always know that if you hire somebody that's lowballing, then you're probably going to get a lowball effect and experience with that person. Just know that. Now, there are some great designers that are still lowballing themselves, but they are also, if you are paying a hefty sum, trust me, they are going to give you a hefty experience. They're not going to give you any crap because <laughs> that kind of sucks for you to say, oh, well, this person's going to charge $300 for a website. Okay, great. Now, if they figure out it's going to be more hours to put in than actually getting paid $300 for a website, then they're probably not going to give you the best experience of the world. But if you have someone that's charging you, let's say $5,000 or $10,000, they're going to actually take the time to work with you because they're getting paid this money or they can't get paid. It's as simple as that. So it really is a, the short answer for you, it depends on who you are and what you're, what you're trying to accomplish. Small tweaks and changes can be done. I offer um, something called a website critique. What that means is that I literally walk through every aspect of your website and I tell you all the different changes that you can make um, in your website where, where that you can do it on your own. And that way it gives you kind of some sort of insight like, oh, am I building that no like and trust factor with them? Um, am I telling people what we're looking for and what, we're, what we can do for them? Am I getting them that information so that they kind of get an understanding? Always know it takes three to five seconds to capture someone's attention. We are in the world of video. I promise you, I, you probably said it to yourself. If I look at a video and it's like 15 minutes long, you will rethink watching that video. 15 minutes versus five minutes five minutes is probably gonna win first. So if you only have three to five seconds to capture somebody's attention, when they go to your website and they see, oh, I do this, this, and this for you, they're like, oh, well they may be hooked and now they can sit on your website for the next 20 minutes, the next 30 minutes. But I can tell you, if it means nothing to them, they're gonna bounce right out your website because they don't really care because you're not giving them anything worth staying for. I just also wanted to say, um, I really liked when you and I were first talking to Queena about how you're not just like looking at somebody's website, like, yeah, here's a website, but really walking them through um, all of the strategic thinking that goes into developing that website and, and what does it take and all of the, the kind of business decisions that go into that, whether we're a nonprofit or not, and then, then we build a website, you know, so that there's something there that really works. So. Here's something too. People are always like, oh, apps, apps, you need an app. It's a, and I also think for like small budget organizations, we need to know why we're doing something. So does my organization need an app? Why? Well, tell me more about this. <laughs> everybody has an app. <laughs> like everybody has an app right now. And it's like, well, does it make sense for your, your organization to have it? So these are things to think about before you get an app. Um, What's your end goal? Uh, how will it benefit the end user? And is it worth the cost? Because if you, pre if you look out for people that are trying to build apps for you, it could cost you anywhere between six and maybe $20,000 to generate and create an app. 
Um, that's for someone to like a designer to actually come in and code this thing and make it function the way you need it to function. So is that money worth it? What's your end goal? So I create apps and we're actually working on an app right now, which we're going through the process of putting it together. And the whole purpose of this app is so that people can be in one area looking for a specific business. So it's kind of like a yellow pages in an app. Um, and it's the, that's the benefit. My end goal is to make sure that the people that are downloading this thing could have like hundreds of businesses in the neighborhood that could really help them find what they're looking for. Um, so with that being said, you definitely want to make sure what your end goal is. Like are your people that are downloading this app, is it, free to them? Are you charging them to download it? Because, you know, if you've gone on uh, Google, uh, you know, like the Play Store and you're going through or you're going through Apple Store and you're looking, some of these apps cost you money, anywhere between a dollar to twenty dollars. So you definitely want to know if it's if it's beneficial to you and your organization before you even think about like, OK, since you come up with your end goal and you know what that is, and you know how it's gonna benefit your users and you're okay with the $10,000 cost, it's attached to it for someone to build this out for you, I would say go for it. If it's not beneficial for you now, I feel like we need to sometimes step, stick with what we have, which is easy, like let's do a website or let's do a calendar or let's let's just have a quick button that says hey just donate to us because we really need your help doing whatever we're doing um sometimes we always don't need an app i feel like there are some apps out here that makes totally no sense no reason for it to even be on my phone i promise you i have 20 apps that i just got rid of last week because <laughs> it made no sense for it to be on my phone because i'm not even using it like my store tells me, oh, you haven't used this app in 20 weeks. I'm like, then why is it here? So you just want to make sure before you even get started on the process of things, you know what the purpose of your, your app is. And people are going to come to you and say, hey, you guys need an app. And you probably don't even need one. Just like when people say, hey, I need a website. And you really don't need one. I know this sounds bad because I'm a web designer. <laughs> and so it's like, uh. You're telling me I don't need a website. Not all the time. Not necessary. I think this is one of the things I really liked when you and I first started talking, Sequina, is that like one is like you work to like how do you empower clients to be able to do things for themselves if that's really the best path for them. And then also like maybe you don't need a giant website. Like, you know, maybe you just need something that gets the message out for right now. And then like at least as I understand it, sometimes you got those for people. And then five years later, they came to you like, now I've got a real business or organization and it's doing all these things. Now I need to build something out that has more functionality. And so it sounds like that's also true for an app. Like I, the organizations that I know of that use an app are things like, okay, well, we're dealing with a homeless population um, who surprisingly maybe have mobile phones but don't have other ways. And we need them to like figure out how they're going to um, get to the nearest place of their services or figure out where the nearest shelter is or maybe have a really simply simple application um, for getting some services like that might be a good use case for um, somebody having technology for um, the nonprofit space or um, things where it's you want to have it on mobile and you want it to be simple could like be some good reasons for it um, I've known with like um, an organization called my think that I have worked with, they um, have things on the phone because they're dealing with a high school population and they want them helping them to figure out budgeting and finances. Well, that's a really great population for an app, right? But that's not everybody, right? If you're senior citizens, that's maybe not the right target audience. So maybe right. like, I love what you say. It's like thinking about it. Do you need it? <laughs> need it. And it's like really getting into it. Like, the app that you were referring to for homeless people, if they don't have a phone, then how are they going to get the information anyway? The best way for that information is to actually have people walk around and tell them that information as opposed to trying to get it electronically. Now, it's different on the flip side of things. If I am a person that want to help the homeless, 
and I know of a shelter in the neighborhood, then now I can go and talk to all of those, you know, the homeless people out there and say, hey, there's a shelter that's like not even a mile away from here that we can get you to. You know, it's just something like that that totally makes sense. The college stuff, college and high school kids, oh yeah, they're all over it because for them, this is their world, you know? Now for the elderly, yeah, I just got my mom on Facebook, okay? Like, and my dad is not even on it at all. So I, I mean, I just for today, just got my dad an Uber for the first time ever in life. <laughs> but for him, he doesn't do any of that. He doesn't know about apps. He doesn't know, he, they're, my parents are older, you know, and their minds are like, I don't really need this stuff. I just need to get from point A to point B. Can I go to the store? That's all I need. They may not even know about apps. So it just depends on who your target is, what's the end goal, and how is it going to benefit the people that you're trying to benefit. That's a definite must. Now I do have a segment because we have like 30 minutes. Yeah. So I'm here to answer any of your questions, whether it's about websites or apps. I wanted to keep something open for everybody. So I, I'm sure you guys have questions. So fire away because I'm a I'm a question person. <laughs> well, how do we connect with you for you to do that review of our, our website and uh, and uh, get an idea of uh, what we need to do? Uh, I, I have a website and uh, it just is flat and it, it serves a very real purpose and I teach uh, Bible studies and people connect to it every week to get the notes that I use. Uh, but I also want to generate some support through that if it's possible. Yeah, definitely. Um, can you go to the next slide for me, Elizabeth? Sure. Let me just move something around on my screen. I just moved all the pictures so I could see everybody. Do, 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 do. I think our content okay. is next. Now, um, the benefit of having this uh, amazing webinar, I'm super excited to say that I'm offering the, the website to speak at $100 off. So you could get it for $197. Just shoot me an email to hello at sequinalucket.com and just mention this email, um, I mean, mention this webinar to me. And then you'll automatically get the, the $100 off. I will then, we'll connect and we'll go through a walkthrough for the critique. The critique is very simple. I usually, it takes me anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour. Um, you're welcome to be on the call if you want to. If you don't, that's okay. Because I literally, you just give me your information, your, um, your website, and I do a video walkthrough of your website. I record it and I send you the link to it so that you can always go back to it and that's what you're paying for so that you can actually go and say, oh, well, she said this or maybe this suggestion might actually work for me. Um, all of the stuff that I'm doing is literally just as we went through this walkthrough is the same. I literally start as if I am a new person, which I am. A lot of times I don't even look at the website until it's time for me to do the walkthrough because I want to do it as if I am new to you and I want to see it from a consumer standpoint and not from just from the logistics of things. And I click all buttons. <laughs> so every button pop up, everything on there, I'm going to talk about it and tell you, oh, that button doesn't work or maybe it should open in a different tab or this might change or maybe you might do a different call to action because this doesn't make sense to what you're doing. And it gives you kind of an insight on how a person is actually walking through your website, seeing it from the first time, and if they're bouncing off, because I'm gonna easily say to you, oh, it, that person, I'm just gonna bounce off of here because it doesn't make sense to me and what I'm looking for. Um, and I think that will might be a benefit, a benefit to everybody. I just really want to say thank you that you're offering that for the people who are on today. And, um, you know, I was saying before we like started everything and recorded that 
um, I just feel like nonprofits were a little bit behind sometimes on the technology and the marketing. And um, to know that we'd have an expert who could look at that and that you give a discount, I really appreciate. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm, I'm glad to help as much as I can. Any, anything about websites or technology or processes, I could probably talk to you all day long. <laughs> and do we have any questions? Yeah, that's a question. I was wondering if people have specific questions about their website. Um, you know, like I'll just give an example from mine. So one of the things that was really eye-opening for me when you were saying like, oh, it doesn't have an offer. And I was like, oh, I've got that button up at the top. And I noticed like you skimmed right past. I was like, oh, it's just in a place you can't see it. And then I realized it's like become a nonprofit master, but like you don't know what that is. And so just kind of like just even that moment, it was like it's not that it's not there. It's just not placed in a way that someone's going to figure out what it is. And I do know that people already like would go on and not know like what the services are that are offered and, and those kind of things. So, um, yeah, so I think like translating that in the world of nonprofits, I think that one of the things I've seen um, as a consistent mistake over websites is because we were service oriented people um, serving too many masters. You know, we're just like, but it has to be like anybody who comes off the street could figure it out. And then we need, it has to serve like, I'll well, just give like homeless people as an example. Like it has to serve the homeless people, but then, oh, but also the donors. Oh, but wait, what if somebody like wanted to come to a food pantry? And then like we end up putting so many layers of stuff that the website really doesn't make sense to anybody. Um, and so actually that's one thing, I don't want to put you on the spot, Sequina, but what about this idea of these multiple audiences? Are there ways we can solve this technologically? Does it mean like kind of extra websites or extra pages or different buttons or light boxes, things I've heard about? <laughs> there are multiple ways that you can um, do multiple audiences. Because sometimes it is, when you look at it, it's so chaotic where you're like, oh my God, what am I here for? And if you're trying, you need to figure out who are you serving first. That's the first thing you need to do. So once you figure out the main person, so if your focus is your donors and people donating things to you, then that needs to be your target audience that you're targeting right away. Now you also have opportunity in your website because you can have multiple pages of a website. So if it's as simple as, down at the bottom, if you're like, if you're a sponsor and you want to sponsor or do something for us, or if you want to, um, you know, give in some way, it, whatever you want, you have different touch points on your website that you can have those things where it could be a simple pop up for a person, or it could be they go to a different page, they just click a button and it goes to another page for them where you speak directly to them. Or another big thing too, is if they're on social, like say you're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of those places, when you're having conversations about certain things, is you can post specifically to whoever your target is at that point, you can start creating simple pages for just that target, not the whole website, just that one area where you say here, click here and donate, and they go right to the donation page. Or if they want to sponsor, they can click a button and go right to the sponsorship page. Um, that way, just like you would when you send out emails. So if you send out an email to somebody and you're saying, hey, we're trying to raise money for this, then you would send them right to that one targeted page instead of sending them just directly to the website. Because once they get there, it's too much. So when I start with my clients, I always say, who are we targeting? If I don't know who my end person is, then there's no way that I can get all this information correct on my website. I think this makes sense because like I know we know from fundraising that landing pages are so effective that like essentially you're simplifying that message and you're saying like, okay, you came here because of this gala. All you're going to see is the gala stuff. Like you don't need to see that like next March we've got a tennis tournament or whatever it is. Like you want to be like, oh, okay this is how I do gala stuff and that we're simplifying it for people. So it, you know, it makes me think that for all the emails we're sending and, and some people do radio ads or Facebook ads or whatever, we always want to make sure that we're paying attention to um, where they're coming from and what is that whole process all the way through to signing up for services or making a donation or whatever it is. Um, 
yeah, that's what I kind of hear from what you're saying. I'm a flow chart person. So I'm the type of person that creates flow charts based on if um, I want people to come to my website, what do they see? Or if I'm on social media and they're clicking through to get to my website to this one page, where do they go? And then it's literally, what do they do next? How are they going to connect with me? Am I asking for an email address in the process? Am I doing this? So it's like all these things put into one little package and it's literally a box for every movement that they're making. So they know my end result is getting a donation for the gala. <laughs> you know, so now I know they're going to give me a hundred dollars and I can give them a table and these are the things that they're going to get when they get there because I'm literally guiding them through this rabbit hole pretty much to the end. Yeah, go ahead, Abby. This hey. is like <laughs> I'm Abby from Squashwise in Baltimore. So um, I missed some of the presentation because I got a call from a donor, which I chatted to Elizabeth. So I was like, yes, that's good. But anyway, um, I'm interested in a little bit of your advice about WordPress. I heard you mention WordPress at the beginning. We use WordPress. I had someone build it, you know, way back when, and it needs massive upgrades. I find WordPress very confusing in some ways. Sometimes it's easy for me to figure something out. Sometimes I feel like I'm in Salesforce that hasn't been developed. Like it's just this massive pit of options. So I'm curious because I want to assign a website upgrade to a couple people on my staff who've expressed an interest. Like, is it easy enough? for people to kind of get a hang of it with a couple of, you know, we can Google tutorials and stuff like that. Or is it more like we should be engaging with a professional to help us who really understands WordPress, like the same way that you would for Salesforce. I'm not gonna try to build my own Salesforce database. That's a lot. That's a lot, trust me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so to answer your question, as far as, um, it depends. What type of theme do you have? And that's the thing that you wanna think about and, um, looking at navigation because themes are not all created equal. I can promise you that. So whatever theme you have, sometimes it find, you find it easier to find stuff because every theme is different. So you might say, okay, well, this area of my uh, website is actually in this section and not in the section you think it should be in. So if that, start with that first. And if you're trying to do this on a budget, I suggest going to, um, YouTube, YouTube's my friend. If I don't know something, trust me, I'm gonna find it. Um, and also asking yourself, is it a paid premium theme? Because if it's paid and premium, um, a paid premium theme, you may have you know, the support that you need because they have a support system that you can actually just, you won't be able to pick up the phone because some of them don't have that, but you could shoot an email out to your support team and say, hey, I got a question and I don't know. They're gonna send back to you. If they're a really good, you know, premium theme company, they're gonna send you an email back and say, hey, here are frequently asked questions and I think your questions could be answered here or they can walk you through that process. That's why I said at the beginning, Elegant Theme is like my most favorite to work with because they don't, I can't pick up the phone and call them, but I can send them an email. And if I'm trying to do something and I can't do it, then I can easily say, help me. And they will literally walk me through the process. So, that is helpful. I know we do not pay for a theme. <laughs> we have like one of the charity themes, right? So like. Sometimes when it's like a free theme, you get what you pay for. That's the right. stuff you pay to people. And it, people are like, seriously, Sequina, I'm like, it's what you pay for. So you're probably not going to have that support that you definitely need. But if it's free to you and you've already built out and it's already set and ready to go, my suggestion is to go to YouTube and just start looking at what you're talking about on these particular things. Okay. So it is possible to do that in-house to like learn it fairly quickly. Okay. And it's Thank not you. difficult. Once you learn your back office and knowing what button goes where a lot of times it's just as simple as you going in and making a, a page a change to a page or um to a post uh if you do blogs do you do blog posts at all uh we have no monthly newsletters which we need to put on the website they're not there anywhere okay, okay. then you probably have it all paged um paged out where you can just look at the pages and go in and make those changes okay thank you so much i have to run to another meeting but thank you very much okay. for your help how to get out.
Thanks, Abby. What other questions do people have about websites? Are people maybe a little bit farther along, like they feel like they've had something for a long time, like Abby does, or somebody may be building something kind of more at the beginning? I feel like my website's really actually more at the beginning stage. How about you, Ellen? Do you have any questions specifically? Yeah, I actually have a very specific question. Um, we would like to add um, resources. Our, our website is mainly geared around being a resource to people. So one of my questions is, how is, is there a method to structuring those resources that is particularly easy for users to to find the things they need? So I know you have like a menu of things at the top. Um, is there a way to like play to users' expectations around how to find things on a website that is mainly resource focused? Um, and then my second question is, we've had trouble in the past loading files because we like to have presentations, training presentations that people from different kinds of medical providers can download and use for their own purposes. Um, but in the past, we've had trouble having those larger files um, available to download from our website. And can you comment about um, maybe if it's not WordPress, it's some other uh, kind of website hosting service or is there a different level of WordPress? You know, maybe we're just not paying for the right plan or kind of platform. Um, so if you could comment on storage um, or the ability to download larger files from a website, that would be great. Okay, so we'll start with your first question, um, which is your resources and separating things. Um, is the entire website you know, for resources or you have like information, like informative information and they become members or how are you structured right now? Um, so right now we, we definitely want to explain uh, the program that we're supporting or the program that we are basically sanctioned to support. So a lot of people don't know a lot about it. So we need to, I think, explain what the program is and who it's for. Um, and then we have, as I said, like a number of different potential users for uh, this program. And we offer different kinds of resources in the form of presentations or videos for those kinds of users. And they may be fairly different. Okay, so everybody is in a different like tier of information, right? That's a good way to think about it, yeah. Okay, so you may um, separate things based on who they are. Um, so like in your menu section at the top, you could say this is for whoever and they actually have like a full resource page of whatever that information is and another for anything else. Now, if you plan on turning that into some sort of membership, they are also a membership um, kind of like plugins that you can add into what you have. Um, I'm not, not sure if you have like a WordPress website or um, any other website, but you can also do like some sort of membership where people can have like specific information from one place to another to another based on what they're, what they're looking for. Um, I would separate the two. I would have a full page of whoever you're speaking to and actually separating that in your menu. So it's easy for people to identify, well, this is this resource is for me or this resource is for them. Um, and to answer your other question, as far as um, your upload, now are you having trouble with your upload and it's like over a certain type of like megabyte or gigabyte and it's saying, no, it's too big. Or if you're, or is people having trouble downloading? It's an upload issue. Okay, so that's a simple, honestly, a simple um, kind of like change in your HTML file to let them be able to upload. Is this a WordPress website too? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Okay, uh, there should be Ryan at 12.30. I'm sorry, I still didn't hear the question. 
Okay. I was asking if it was a WordPress website. Uh, yes, it is a WordPress website. Thank you. So that's a simple change that you can make to say, hey, um, because certain um, companies like GoDaddy or any of your providers will say, well, we only have like a max that you can put in. It's a simple fix in a file where you can say, hey, I need more, you know, more upload um, speed. That way you can actually go in and just change it. It's honestly, you could shoot it, you could do it on uh, YouTube and say, hey, I need more, you know, uploading, you know, speeds in my, um, in my WordPress. And they will, I mean, it's a bunch of videos that could show you how to do that. If it becomes too technical, because it is, it's a little technical depending on who your service provider is, then you might, you know, consult somebody like myself who could just go in and actually make that upload, you know, change for you. Um, if it is too overwhelming, because sometimes it could get a little overwhelming, then I mean, don't do it all together. Just find another web designer that could go in and just fix that for you so you can upload bigger files than what they're offering. Because I think it's like 512 or something. They give you like a minimum that you can just go in and change that. Okay, thank you very much. I thought that was a really great question. Yeah, because I think that's the kind of thing someone might not think to an to ask, but um, it's the kind of thing I think would trip up a lot of people, um, particularly like in their case, it's a very resource heavy website. Yeah. Um, how about you, Barry? We just have a couple minutes left. I was wondering if you had any questions. You know, I have to apologize because I, I kind of came and went. Um, I, I got a new stove out of the deal, though, and uh, some really, really valuable information from the beginning of the webinar when I was um, most present. And um, so what I'm looking forward to, actually, Sakina, is going to your website and spending some time there. My own website, I rarely use. I have a grant writing business and a consulting business for nonprofit organizations. And... Um, uh, fortunately, I suppose I've I've gotten uh, enough uh, clients over the years through word of mouth. But I I know that I need to keep it up to date because there will be folks who will be uh, you know going there and and looking at it and seeing it. I have no idea how often I should do it. And interestingly, um, in the very beginning beginning, it was difficult to come up with usable images. And so there was a big question, and I guess this would be my question to you. Um, there was a big question of like how much blank space, how much empty space, you know, should we have? Because I think that's, that's kind of the preference now is that there not be a lot of um, um, clutter on a web page. So um, there's, I, I guess the question is like, is there a balance of formula? Um, how often should I refresh the, the, the images and, you know, that sort of thing? So I suggest anywhere between three and six months, you should be trying to look at your website um, for small, simple changes. I'm not seeing a complete overhaul every three to six months. That's a lot of work. I'm saying if you may need to tweak things, like your copy may need to change a bit because now your target is different six months from now. Um, you may go in and start making like small changes like that. Sometimes you don't even need an update. I haven't had needed an update on my website. I always go back and look at it though and say, well, am I still targeting the same people that I was targeting a year ago? If that's not the case anymore, then I may need to just make some changes to it. As far as images, um, I'm not sure, cause you, there's, oh my God, there's so much stuff out here nowadays. Like you could buy images, you know, that's gonna pertain to what you're doing or you can find the stuff for free. You know, um, unsplash.com is a really good resource if you're looking for something that is, um, you are looking for some great images, but you really don't take your own pictures, you know, because sometimes you just don't. But they have like a database of images that are just kind of out of this world and they're all free for commercial use and personal use as well. And you could definitely use it on your website. So if you feel like um, the balance is, it's all, to me, it's all about, I need an image of whatever I'm, whatever visual a person is trying to convey to the people that are coming to my website. 
those are the things that you want to kind of like put out there. If it's about grant writing, maybe you just need a piece of paper and a pen, a picture of that, you know, just something so that people can kind of get an understanding of what it is. Again, we're all very fast people. So in our brains, we're just like, okay, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Move on. It, literally, that's how it is. Like I jump on a website. I don't like it. I go somewhere else. But if I like it and I get an understanding of it, then I want to stay. I want to see what they're talking about. Is this information making sense to me? Can this person help me? What kind of results can they get from me? These are the things that I want to know. So to answer your question, as far as like the images go, try to find some that works just fine for what you're actually saying. And you don't have to have a ton of them. Oh my gosh. Sequina, thank you so much. This was so helpful. And for me getting like other people's answers, my brain is going like, I was thinking, you know, I know Barry and I know he's got a ton of clients. I bet every few months you could be adding clients to that or, you know, some testimonials. So even that I feel like is something that could just, you know, be updated. And so I want to say, whoo, somebody's getting upset. One, you know, thank you so much for your time, energy, and expertise. And then just number two, that um, the offer that you're putting out for the people who were here today. So thank you. Yeah. Guys, happen until October 15th. So, oh, you didn't get the offer, Barry? <laughs> no, no. Um, there was something about $197, and I saw an email address, and I know we're in overtime. Can I just email you and ask you about it? Will that work? I'm calling people here to do. So, shoot me an email and just mention this webinar, and you're already in, and you'll get the $100 off. We'll go ahead and get that set up for you, and we can do a walkthrough of your, your website for you. Nice. Yeah. Right, thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. And they have until October 15th. So even if you have like people in your replay that's looking at it before that time frame, great. If they, they send me something on the 16th, I'm going to say no. <laughs> I got to run. Thank you, Sequina and uh, Eliz Elizabeth. Uh, very good seminar. Appreciate it. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.